Do you find creating contact forms difficult or confusing? Or maybe you don't want to pay a monthly fee to have a simple contact form on your website. If either of those things are true, then you're in the right place. In this video, I'll walk you through step by step how to create a free contact form for your WordPress site using Contact Form 7. I'm going to show you all of the features that the base plugin for Contact Form 7 provides you. By the end of this video, you're going to have a well-functioning contact form on your website, which is going to boost conversions and help you grow your business. Hi, I'm Bjorn from WP Learning Lab, and let's get started. Here we have a nice website, but what we're missing is a contact form. On the contact page, all we have is an email address people can send information to, and I want to put a contact form right there. And I don't want to make it difficult, and I don't want to pay for it monthly or even one time. So for that, we're going to use Contact Form 7. Let's log into our dashboard, go to Plugins, Add New Plugin, search for Contact Form 7. This is the guy right here, 5 million plus active installs. WP Forms also has 5 million plus active installs. Also a great plugin. They have a free and a paid version. The free version does a bunch of stuff. The paid version does more stuff. Contact Form 7 does less things. It focuses purely on making good co contact forms that work. They aren't pretty, but they work. And there's no payments at all whatsoever. And there's a whole lot of add-ons you can get for Contact Form 7 as well, all of which, or most of which, I have tutorials for on this channel. Click on Install Now when you're ready. And then click on Activate. If you're doing this on a live website, you might want to back up your site first. I'll link to the tutorial in the card up above and the description down below, which will help you back up your websites and restore them if something goes wrong. Now this is installed. Let's refresh the page and we're going to have right here a contact menu item right there. Let's click on that. This is our very first form. It comes pre-populated when you install Contact Form 7. The first thing we're going to do is just take off this one, just keep it as contact form and we save it. That will update that update in here as well. And down below is where the form is. I know it looks scary because it looks a little bit like code, but it's not that bad. So we're going to go through all these tabs in this video so you can see how all the, all the options in the plugin work and how you can make it work for you on your website or your client's website. So the very first thing we see is label. So this is the label for our field and the first field is your name and in square brackets is the actual field. Then we have a label for email and then the actual email field, then a label for subject and a field for the subject, label for message and a field for the message and a submit button. And that's all it is, super simple. If we click on save, let's just add this to a page right now so we can see how it looks. Copy that short code, actually no, don't even copy that short code, just go to Pages, edit the contact page or whichever page you want to add this to. I'm going to add a Gutenberg block right there. It's going to be a contact form 7 block. If you can't see or don't see contact form 7 here, just search for it and it'll show up. We choose contact form from the list. It'll have all the forms you've created on there. You might have 10 or 20 or 30 forms. You can pick the appropriate one for this page. Click on Update and View Page. And while we're waiting, go ahead and hit the Like button. That lets me know you're getting value from this video. It also helps this video appear for more people on YouTube. So it's super helpful if you do that. And click Subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any of my future videos. Now let's get back into it. And now we can see our form. And I wanted to show you this right now so you can see the parallel between the code and the actual form. So on the left-hand side here, we see our code and our labels. On the right hand side we see the fields and it matches up pretty clearly. And I think when you see it like this it starts to make a whole lot of sense what all this means and how it works because you can see what it's doing over here on the main website. There's also other fields you can add. For example you could add a telephone number field. So let's highlight this and copy it. Paste it right there. I'm doing the same layout as, as it exists in this form already, to keep things simple. I'm going to call this your phone number. I'm going to erase this. And I'm going to click on Tell for telephone number. I'm not going to make this feel required. I'll just leave the name as it is. This is just for your reference and for the, the form itself referencing itself, if it has to. 
default values, ID attributes, and class attributes. You can just keep blank. And here's our phone number. Or not our phone number. This is the field that will ask for phone number. If I save this, and we go back to our page out here and refresh, there's our new field. And that's how easy it is to create a contact form. And the field options we have by default are text fields, which we use in this case for the name, email fields, which we use for the email field. This is a validator, so it's gonna make sure it's a real email address. You can add URL fields, telephone fields, number fields, date fields as in a date picker, text areas, which we have down here for the message, drop down menus, check boxes, radio buttons, acceptance, which means there's a checkbox, which means you have to accept what they're checking. So usually terms of service before they can submit the form. Then there's a quiz field, a file field, and a submit field or a submit button. That's many there are by default. There are a bunch of add-ons you can get for free in the WordPress repository that will add more fields and more button options you can add in here. Click on save whenever you do in your work just to make sure you don't lose any of your work. After we have our form how we want it, we have to go to the mail tab. This is what's sent to you or to somebody, to your site admin in or by default, sorry. Under settings and general, we have the admin email. By default, this is the email the form is sent to, which is right here denoted with in the square brackets site admin email. So that's this email that's right in here. From site title, then the address. This is what the email is going to generate and be sent to you as the admin. It's going to add the subject in. It's going to add in headers. So if you reply to it, it's going to reply to the email that's entered in the form, which is the your email field. You'll notice the reference to these names and this tell-415 that we uh, we're able to change if we wanted to as a telephone field in your subject, your message. These are all referenced right up here as fields that you can add to your email. Down here is the message body from your name, your email, subject, message body, and I'm going to add phone. Highlight that. Add that in right there. You notice the, the tell is in black and the rest are grayed out. That's because we haven't added this to any of the fields down here yet. Now, if I save this, it'll be grayed out as well. That way you'll know if you have a large and complex form, whether or not all the fields that you wanted to collect information about are added to your email. And then this is the whole email sent out to you. You can also check this box to add more emails. You could send these, send this, sorry, to somewhere else. Send this to one of my other email addresses. This could go to your secretary. This could go to your clients. This could go to the president. It doesn't really matter where it goes is add emails where you want it to go. You could also just have this one go to multiple places. I can put a comma here and I can add as many email addresses as I want, just replacing or uh, have a comma between them and it'll send to all of those email addresses as well. The last thing we should look at is the file attachment field. If we go to our form over here and we add in a file field, we give it a name. I'll just leave it at default. We can have a file size limit if we want. We can have acceptable file types if we want, separated by a pipe character. So if you want pictures, it could be JPEG, PNG, GIF. And those would be the only file types you'd be allowed to upload. The files, file size limit is in bytes. So if you wanted to have 10 megabytes, you couldn't do 10, for example, because that would be 10 bytes, which is not any kind of file size. So you can go to um, megabyte to bytes converter, I just converted to 10. I'm going to choose this one here, the binary, and paste that in there. Now we have this as a bytes limit. Click on insert tag when you're ready. Click on save. And now when we go to mail, we have this field here in black, so we haven't added it to our field form down here yet. Let's copy that, and we put that into file attachments. If you put this field into anywhere else, it's not going to work. And this is the only field that's like that. All the other fields you can put everywhere because they're just uh, characters, numbers, and letters. And this field is an actual file that needs to be attached. So it has to be in the special field. So that's the ins and outs of creating the form and creating the mail message that's sent out. Let's save this. 
let's go to messages. This is various messages that the form is going to output depending on what happens. You can read through these. They make a lot of sense, and they're actually pretty good how they are as default. For example, sender's message was successfully sent. Thank you for your message. It has been sent. This will appear on the website. Sender's message failed to send. There was an error in trying to send your message. Please try again later. And you can read through all these, like I said, and change them to what you want, but they're pretty solid how they are. Under additional settings, you can add code snippets. These snippets, if we go to additional settings, are quite specific. So if you wanted to add this snippet right here, subscribers only, colon true, this allows it so only logged in users can submit the form, which is pretty slick. And then we have demo mode, skipping email, acceptance as validation. You can read through all these things and decide what you want to add for your additional settings. Let's click on save. And if we go back out to our website here and we go to contact, we fill out this form really quick. And then we click on choose file. It'll be a real file chooser. And I'm just going to pick this one here. It's 29 kilobytes, it's a PNG file. And as long as it's less than 10 megabytes, and as long as it's a PNG, JPEG, or a GIF, this will work. And it's not the contact form seven limitation. Those were the requirements that we put on this form field, this file upload field, when we set it up, if you recall. You can rewind back in the video to see how you do that. Click on open, adds it to the form, click on submit. This spinning wheel means it's working and it's done working. Thank you for your message, it has been sent. The larger the image or the larger whatever the attachment is, the longer it's gonna to take to send out that message. That was a pretty small image, so it went pretty fast. And here's our message. I sent a bunch of test messages previously before I recorded the live video, because I wanted to see if everything works how I expect. And we have our message here from Bill. This is the email address we entered, phone number, subject. This is the test message from the website which was our message for the body. And there's our image, which can now be viewed, downloaded, saved, whatever the email client allows. And that's how we very easily set up a form using Contact Form 7 for free. This now exists for free on your website and it keeps collecting contacts and leads for you and your business. And I have a whole playlist, which by the time you view this video is either gonna be done or still on its way, that is gonna show you how to use tons and tons and tons of the Contact Form 7 add-ons so you can do everything with these forms except for make them fly. You'll be able to do so much stuff with these forms by the end of that playlist. So if you like Contact Form 7 and the idea of having free forms on your site, then make sure you subscribe and stay tuned in because those tutorials are coming. And while you're here, I thought you might want to know about the completely free Ultimate 17-point WordPress launch checklist. It is a checklist, a detailed checklist, of all the things that you need to do or should do before you launch a WordPress site, written by me, someone who's launched thousands of websites over the years. This is a checklist I created almost 10 years ago, and it's been downloaded at least 100,000 times. I haven't checked the stats lately, but it was over 100,000 a few months ago. It is a checklist of what you go through before you launch a website. And there's two versions of it. There's this version here. It includes videos and includes links to other resources. So it really takes you through the steps you need to take to launch your website in a nice format like you see here. And we also have a print friendly version over here. So you can print it off and this is a smart PDF. That means it will adjust to the size of your screen. For example, if you're on iPhone 12 Pro, see how it all adjusts to fit the smaller screen? It messes up the WordPress and the title up here. But everything else, it goes down to the smaller screen. What if you have a Galaxy Fold? It'll look like this. Or at least pretty close to what this is. Unlike other PDFs that don't shrink, that are a real pain to look at when they're shrunk down. And the, the uh, print-friendly version works the same way if you want just black and white. And they're also downloadable. Click on the little download button and you download the PDF to your computer. The benefit of the smart PDF as well is when I update it, you will get the updates instantly. So you can get this just by opting in with your name and email address on the page that I've linked to in the description down below. You get this totally for free. And when you download it, you'll have the current version of it. 
But then if I update it in the future, this smart PDF at this URL will be updated with the new content that you can come back and download it again. So I recommend when you opt in that you bookmark this page so you can save it for future reference. And every few months, I don't update it every week, but every few months or so, come in here, check if there's some changes, download the new version, and you're good to go. So if you want to join over 100,000 fellow WordPress users and get this PDF checklist for yourself, do so now. There's a link down in the description. All you have to do is enter your name and email, and I will send you emails. Most of those emails are just about videos I've published on my various channels. Sometimes I send you offers for stuff you might be interested in, mostly uh, WordPress courses and stuff that I offer myself. And it's no big deal. You can unsubscribe at any time and then keep this checklist forever anyway. Page, on there you enter your name and email, and I will send you the PDF in your email. And it also takes you to a thank you page after you opt in where you can download it and access it directly from that page. Next up, check out this video up here. It's the next one of this Contact Form 7 series, or check out the entire playlist of Contact Form 7 series tutorials right down here. And if you haven't done so yet, click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. My name is Bjorn from WP Learning Lab. Till next time, keep crushing it, and I will see you in the next video.